So in this video, I wanted to talk about nutritional deficiencies. There's some hidden sources of why people have nutritional deficiencies, especially despite taking vitamins. Now, these nutrients that you're supposed to be taking to enhance your health um, usually are supposed to be in the food, uh, but the problem is the soils are so bad um, that it's hard to find food that has enough nutrients, especially in the U.S. So you have this empty harvest, okay? So you have that. And then you have the other fact that people just don't eat enough of the right amounts of food to get the nutrients. But the nutrients help you in many different ways. They're kind of like um, helper factors that help chemistry work better through the body in the formation of uh, body tissue and the formation of different body chemicals to allow the chemical process to occur, uh, protection against uh, disease and um, like high sugar, for example. So like, for example, vitamin B1 protects you against the symptoms of high blood sugar. So even though you have, if you have two people with high blood sugar and someone and one of them is deficient in vitamin B1, that's the person that will exhibit more symptoms from high blood sugar and this person might not. So you can kind of look at vitamins as birth control pills for disease because they actually protect your cells from further damage. Um, so, of course, the most obvious thing is just not getting enough nutrients from the diet, okay? So, we're going to move beyond that. We're going to talk about some hidden reasons why you might be deficient, okay? That goes beyond just the diet. Uh, one is you don't have enough stomach acid. Now, let me explain what that means. If you don't have enough um, hydrochloric acid, you're going to have a hard time absorbing minerals and trace minerals, which are minerals needed, but in much smaller amounts. So the trace minerals would be like zinc, selenium, cobalt, and the regular minerals, minerals would be like calcium, magnesium, uh, phosphorus. So we need stomach acid to absorb the nutrients. Also, we need that to help break down protein into amino acids. So amino acid is a nutrient, a micronutrient. Um, protein is a macronutrient. So if you don't have the stomach acid, then you may have a problem with um, uh, breaking down the protein. The acid actually uh, triggers an enzyme to break down the protein. Usually it's not just 100% of the acid dissolving, it's the release of a certain enzyme. So you never get that release of the enzyme and then you end up with undigested protein and you get gas as a common symptom. And um, the, the way that you know you have low stomach acid is that you have heartburn or indigestion or bloating. Okay, that's very, very common. But there's one more purpose of this very strong acid, which should be between one and three, by the way, which is very strong, and it's to kill off microbes. If you're not able to kill off those microbes, you, you happen to develop a condition called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where microbes are now growing in the wrong place, in the small intestine, not the large. You should not have all this microbial uh, action going on in the small intestine. And the problem with that is that you get an overgrowth in the wrong place and then those microbes eat up all your nutrients because in the small intestine, that's when you have 90% of the absorption of nutrients happen. So if these guys are eating up all the fuel or the food particles and you don't have enough, you're going to have nutritional deficiency just from that. So one of the big causes of SIBO is low stomach acid. So these are definitely connected, okay? And if you have SIBO, you're going to have a lot of gas, tons of gas. And you, you, there's a test that your doctor can do to determine it if you have it. But you want to not add a lot of fiber or probiotics in there because that's going to feed the microbes more. And we're not, we don't want to add more microbes to the system. We want to do more stomach acid. We want to do fasting. And we want to do certain types of vegetables. Okay, You can look up the video on SIBO and actually get more data. Okay, number two low bile. So your gallbladder is not working or it's missing. Um, and you don't have enough bile. And you're, you're not going to be able to get the sufficient fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K, K1, and K2, which is really important in uh, driving calcium out of the soft tissues, out of the arteries, out of the joints. Vitamin A is for the eye. So you'll be driving at night and you can't quite see in the dark. Uh, for the immune system, for the sinuses. So you might develop sleep apnea or have sinus congestion, vitamin D, bone pain, depression, immune problems, vitamin E, you exert yourself and you feel tired really quick. So you have no endurance, 
or you might have angina pain. That's a vitamin E deficiency. So you can have all sorts of issues. And also you won't be able to absorb the omega-3 fatty acids and DHA, and that can lead to all sorts of things. But uh, again, if you don't have enough bile, you're not going to be able to um, absorb the fat-soluble vitamins and the essential fatty acids. Okay. Despite taking them as supplements. Okay, three, uh, low enzymes. That's usually in the pancreas because your pancreas produces most of the enzymes in the body and it's supposed to determine what you put in your mouth. You eat it, it goes down here. Your body releases enzymes to break down those particles. Um, so you have this whole chemical reaction going on. Well, if you actually consume a lot of, of the wrong foods over many years and you develop prediabetes or insulin resistance, um, or you just basically kind of you know, used up the enzymes because you're eating all cooked foods, which is really bad. You don't have enough raw vegetables. Um, then the pancreas isn't going to release the enzymes. People that have diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance just don't have the capacity of pancreatic function anymore. So if they, because the pancreas actually regulates uh, insulin and another hormone called glucagon, which is the blood sugar thing. It regulates when you eat and when you don't eat, but it also is another function of releasing the enzymes. So if you don't have enough enzymes, you're going to have all sorts of undigested, incomplete um, food going through, particles going through, and uh, it's going to create bloating and gas. Other than that, you'll be totally fine. Okay, SIBO, we talked about that. It's basically going to create deficiencies of nutrients. And then number five, decrease flora. Like your friendly bacteria, it's called microbiome. And the large bowel, uh, let's say it's not sufficient. Um, maybe you took an antibiotic or you, you know, you're exposed to glyphosate and all the GMO food, which is in the grocery store, which they don't label. That's actually classified as an antibiotic, by the way. It's patented by Monsanto. So it's basically killing off the microbes. And you're wondering why you don't have the digestive capacity you once had. So without the flora, you can't recycle the bile as well as you did before. And that alone can create a whole chain reaction of things. But the flora is very important in breaking down fiber, also helping us make vitamins, especially the B vitamins. Uh, biotin is one really important one. So if you don't have enough biotin, you're going to get hair loss. The quality of skin and hair is going to be very poor. So the flora gives you certain healthy acids that help blood sugar issues. They help protect against microbes and pathogens, but they also help make vitamins for you. Number six, raw vegetables, nuts, and seeds. There are certain um, compounds in raw foods that are protective antioxidants that protect the uh, plant or nut or seed against um, developing into uh, an actual plant, okay? And so you have phytic acid, you have enzyme inhibitors, phytic acid and all these. And even though it's an antioxidant, it can actually uh, block the absorption of nutrients. So this is why for some people, when you actually just slightly steam the vegetable or even you get rid of that phytic acid or you soak these two things in water overnight, you germinate them and it's much easier to digest and you absorb more nutrients. Some people can do, do fine with this, other people can't. But I just want to let you know that this could be a problem, especially if you're um, trying to absorb minerals. Uh, some of these, um, the properties in some of these uh, foods uh, block the absorption of minerals. Okay, they act as a chelator. It's called phytic acid. I did a whole video on this. You can watch it. I'll put a link down below. This is a very common reason why people uh, have nutritional deficiencies. They have insulin resistance. What happens is the purpose of insulin is not just to regulate blood sugar, it's to help you absorb nutrients in the cell. So especially like minerals and even vitamins, vitamin C especially. So if you're consuming higher amounts of carbs and sugar and you have insulin resistance, that's like a big problem for amino acids going into the cell, uh, formation of bone, preventing a loss of collagen. So you have this loose skin and you're wondering why these vitamins aren't working. Well, your cells will not absorb them if you have insulin resistance. Okay, put a link down below to learn about that. Uh, number eight, non-food-based vitamins. So you're taking this synthetic commercial vitamin and you're thinking, oh yeah, this is really, really healthy. No, it's all synthetic. It's not the real thing. There's no, it's not based on food. It's made from chemicals. Um, so this is a situation where you're getting a fake vitamin. Okay, don't buy the fact that um, 
all vitamins are the same. No, it's like, where do they come from? What's the source of the vitamin? I can see taking some synthetic vitamins if you're also taking a, a food-based complex with it. But just so you know, if it's not from food, it's definitely not the same as from food. Okay, bad diet. So many people come up to me and they go, what vitamin should I take? But they haven't changed or addressed their diet yet. Well, I think they're wasting your money. So you have to fix the diet first, then you can add supplements because taking supplements, just it's not gonna, you're not gonna see the effects because the actual cause of your symptoms and the reason why you're taking supplements comes from this bad diet. So anyway, I wanted to cover all nine of the uh, hidden nutritional deficiency factors so you have more awareness. All right, thanks for watching. Hey guys, so there's a whole bunch of people that really need this information. So press the share button and let's get it way out there.